So this is a nice image of the process of protein synthesis, and it's nice because you can see the, the players involved. First of all, here's my DNA, and you can see it makes sense that if we were to, for example, split apart the DNA and go through the process of transcription, we might produce this messenger RNA. The good news in the next piece where I talk about the molecular process of transcription, it's really similar to DNA replication. The messenger RNA then is taken to the cytoplasm, and the cytoplasm contains my good buddy here, the ribosome. This is the ribosome, this thing right here. And the messenger RNA is then translated into a protein. And so this is the process. Taking the messenger RNA and translating the information into the protein is the process of trans translation. Translation happens in the cytoplasm. Wherever you find a ribosome, translation can happen. Ribosomes live in the cytoplasm. They don't live in the nucleus. However, where does your DNA live? It lives in the nucleus. And so this, everything here, is happening in the nucleus. That says nucleus, whatever you think it might say. Transcription takes place in the nucleus. Why have a messenger RNA molecule? Why, like, really? Why would we bother going through a process like this? It comes back to an analogy that I kind of feel like I've made before, which is that the DNA molecule is big. It, in fact, it's huge. On one molecule of DNA, you can have thousands of genes, which means you have thousands of pieces of information that can code for proteins. You don't want to take all of that piece of DNA in and out of the nucleus out to the ribosome to have the proteins made and then take it back into the nucleus, you want to make a copy of it. And I can't remember if I've actually given you this analogy yet, but in Wendy Land, I think of this as the DNA is like this fantastic recipe book. Now, I don't cook ever, just so you know. But if I had this amazing recipe book from, like, my great, 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 great grandma, and it was sitting in my attic in archival, like an archival um, box so that it would stay safe and be awesome for forever, and it had every recipe that she'd ever made and was fantastic, I would probably maybe go to the attic I wouldn't bring that amazing book down to my kitchen. And I wouldn't do it, number one, because I'm not a tidy human. And so I probably would, like, spill stuff all over it, and it would get, it'd be all bad. So let's leave. Plus, it's huge because it's, like, got 8 million recipes in it because she liked to cook. So this huge book is in the attic. I'm going to go up. I'm going to take note cards. Look. I even have some. I'm going to take these note cards into my attic, and I'm going to decide I'm going to make brownies and cookies and cheesecake and lemon bars. And if anybody wants to make me those, I'll take them right now. They sound really good. So I'm going to copy down the recipes for those. Now, Grandma's cookbook is the DNA. My transcription of the recipe is the messenger RNA. And I'm like the little messenger RNA holding the information. Then I go down to the kitchen and say, hey, mom, this is how it would roll in my house. Mom, would you make me some of these brownies and cookies and lemon bars and cheesecakes? And then I would kiss her, and she would make them for me. And she'd be the ribosome making translating the information on the recipe card and making a protein, which is my brownies. And then I'd yumptualize them because now we have brownies in the house. Yum.
Make your own analogy so that you understand the big picture, because now I'm going to dive into holy molecular process, and guess who's coming back? Not DNA polymerase. That's not the rock star of transcription. RNA polymerase is the rock star of transcription. Brilliant. So let's look at how that process actually happens. 